so as so it says in the next verse it says so the king's scribes were called at that time and this is so bizarre because i was reading this on wednesday preparing for a message on thursday and this is what it says in verse 9. It says, So the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month, which is the month of Sivan, on the 23rd day. And I just paused there. How many have ever just read past these dates in the scriptures? And I stopped when I said that, and I thought, I wonder what the 23rd day of Sivan was, what it is on our calendar today. Now I was reading this on Wednesday, preparing for a message on Thursday. And you know what? Wednesday on the Hebrew calendar was the 23rd day of Savan. Wait, did y'all just hear what I just said? Like what are the odds of that happening? So it was on that day that they actually made the decree that Esther and Mordecai wrote this decree. And it says, that they wrote that all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, the princes of the provinces, from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces, um, in its, everyone in their own script to every people in their own language, and to the Jews and their own script and language. Now listen. <laughs> they wrote this decree that authorized the Jews to defend themselves. They, it authorized the Jews to fight back against their enemy. Now let's pull this out of the natural and let's pull it into the spirit. Because people are not our enemy. We do not fight against flesh and blood. The enemy might be calling for nights of rage, but we're going to call for nights of revival and nights of love. Amen? We are not going to fight evil with evil. We're going to fight, we're going to counteract evil with good. Come on. And we're going to love these people. These people are scared, they're confused, and many of them are demonized. Can we understand this is one of the greatest opportunities for revival, for awakening, and for a harvest of souls? I'm so grateful for Bud's word today. That little boy, did he bless you? Come on, Jesus is coming soon. We got to get out there. We got to preach the gospel. We got to start preaching the, to the lost. We got to share with the lost. Come on, it's one of those, the best days for the kingdom of God. Because when that decree went forth, it gave the, the, the church, if you will, God's people, opportunity to gather, to organize, and to strategize for greater freedom in their land. And I want to show you what happened next. The very last verse, verse 17, 16 and 17 of chapter 8, it says, The Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor, and in every province and city, Wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then look what happens. Then many of the people of that land became Jews because the fear of the Jews or the fear of, let's say, God fell upon them. You know what happened right after they made this decree? Revival started breaking out in the land of Shushan and all these people decided, you know what? I want to be on God's side. I want to be on God's side. Come on, before they hated the Jews, they despised the Jews. They were all about Haman's decree to wipe out the Jews. But suddenly now, they're saying, I want to be one of them. You know why? Because there's blinders coming off of people's eyes. Come on, we need to understand that that which has been held in place by a curse is coming off. And people's eyes are being opened. Can we believe that even, even family members that maybe have a different opinion? We have family members that have a different opinion on this subject. You know what? We don't, we don't have to fight with them. We don't have to argue with them. We have to love them. We have to love them. We have to understand that people are all in a different place right now. And we've got to be God's ambassadors in the midst of the earth. And we've got to understand that we're living in a time right now. It has been prophesied time and time and time again. That as soon as Roe v. Wade is overturned, that the greatest revival this nation has ever seen will begin to break out. And here we can see in the book of Esther that we've been preaching out of, we can actually see... That when the, when the decree went forth that canceled out the previous decree, the greatest season of revival actually broke out in that land. 
And so in Esther chapter 9, I want you to be ready for this, okay? I want you to be ready. Because what happened, um, could I, could I, could I have Lucas up here? Could Lucas come up here? Lucas is like, yes, I'll come up here. Come up here, Lucas. He's amazing. I want to watch you. I want you to watch him run. So when the Lord first spoke to me about divine reversal was um, in the year 2015, Lucas was born in 2013. He was almost two years old the day that the Lord spoke this to me. And, and at the time, Lucas had been diagnosed with having a compression in his brain between where his, his skull and his brain met. And the doctor said that he would need a surgery. And, um, but the problem was that he had an issue with his heart that made anesthesia very difficult for him. Um, and so the doctor said, we, we kind of need to wait. But then they gave him all the bad case scenarios of what would happen if you waited um, to do this surgery. And some of the things that, that were um, mentioned were that he could lose the use of an arm or a leg. And so we were in this waiting period when the Lord spoke to me very, very strongly about this word about divine reversal. And um, the, the day that the Lord spoke that to me, um, I, I, I was sharing it with, uh, with Apostle Tom, and we were talking together, and we were praying for several different divine reversals. How many of you need some divine reversals in your life? Maybe you have a family member that needs a reversal. Maybe you have some financial things. Maybe you just have some stuff in your life that you just know that you need a reversal on. Well, the very day that God spoke to me about a divine reversal, Lucas had, awake, had woke up that morning and he had basically lost the use of his left leg. That's what the doctor said could happen. And the doctors had told uh, Jason and Valerie that if that happened, that the damage would be irreversible. I'm just letting that sink in for just a minute. How many know the enemy always likes to have a decree? But God's decree supersedes what the enemy has decreed. And so on the, on the exact same day that God said it's time for divine reversals, this is what happened. And so we brought Lucas over and we prayed for him that day. And I want you to know that day nothing changed. I think the second day things got worse. But on the third day, on the third day, Lucas got out of bed and started running around his house. And you saw how fast he ran. Come on, Lucas is a, a star athlete in his school, aren't you, Lucas? He's, won, he's got all kinds of track medals and everything because he's fast. Because the Lord brought a divine reversal where it was otherwise irreversible. You give me a high five for that story, amen? And you can go down if you want. He is a miracle in motion. Let's thank the Lord for Lucas. Watch him run. <laughs> that's what you get for being the pastor's grandchild you get to have your stories told and so Esther chapter 9 verse 1 says this on the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them the reverse occurred and instead God's people had power over those that hated them it was a turnaround it was a turnaround season. I just, I believe that we're in a turnaround season. I believe that we're going to see revival. I believe that we're going to see uh, amazing manifestations. I think that we're going to see a, a harvest of souls come in. And I just want to read you one more little passage because last week um, I talked to you about that the, that the Lord had said to me that it is, that we've entered the time of the hanging of Haman's 10 sons. Now remember, we're not talking about any kind of, any kind of violence or anything against people. But what we are talking about is God dealing with enemies. The demonic powers. When I, when I looked up these names, they mean things, and I'll preach it sometime just to kind of give you the whole unpacking of it. But it, it meant things like one of the names meant um, apathy, complacency, um, and slumber. One of them means bitterness, the poison of the venom of a snake. One of them was a representation of, the, of a Jezebel spirit, of Leviathan, crooked communications. How many know that these are, these are principalities and powers? How many understand that God's in the, in the business of dealing with enemies, principalities and powers? And so it says that on, the, on that day, Esther chapter 1, 
uh, 9 verse 1 says that the reverse occurred. And verse 2 says the Jews gathered together in their cities and they began to defend themselves. And let me just show you verse 3. It says, And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's worth, helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. And this is where I want us to, to, to pray. I want us to pray that governors, that senators, that legislators, that the fear of the Lord would fall in this next season of time as new laws are being written and as new decrees are being made and that in the midst of revival that there can be truly a reset of this nation. 